Hello and welcome to our special edition of Nature Live Online, our family festival quiz. My name is Rosie, I'm from the learning team at the museum and I'm going to be your host today. As part of our family festival, tune in to Nature with Pucker Herbs. This quiz is for you to play at home with friends or family. There'll be some questions to test your nature knowledge, plus some that will need you to look or listen carefully and some that might need you to work in a team. So hopefully there's going to be something for everyone. And very excitingly, today we are also joined by three very special guests. So I'd like to say a big hello to Alison, Khalil and Christina as they join us in our online studio this morning. Good morning, you three. Hopefully you are joining us. Hello, hi there. <laughs> Lovely to see you this morning. I hope you're doing well. You're looking fantastic. So everyone watching at home, if you've been tuning in to the Nature Lives online so far, you may recognize Alison, Khalil and Christina as our fantastic Nature Live hosts. They've been doing a brilliant job at quizzing our scientists over the last few months. But today the tables have turned and they're going to be being quizzed today themselves as they'll be taking part in the quiz too. Now you might be thinking that they have a bit of an unfair advantage they work at the Natural History Museum, they are scientists themselves, so we thought we would level the playing field a little bit. Rather than ask you to compete against them, we're going to ask you to join one of their teams. Alison, Khalil and Christina are going to be your team captains. You're going to choose one of their teams and then at the end of the quiz, whatever your team captain scores, you get to add to your own Points. So a nice boost to your score if you choose carefully. So to help you make this important decision, I think we should hear more from our team captains and find out a little bit more about your, your options of teams to choose from. Let's start with Alison. Good morning, Alison. How are you today? I am brilliant. Thank you, Rosie. I'm really excited for our quiz today. I'm very excited. Now, you might have guessed I am a bit of a fan of big cats, so I am team big cat today. And when we think cats, we have to think things like lions, cheetahs, leopards, but we do have one species of wild cat in the UK. They're found up in Scotland. They're amazing animals, so, so do Google them after the quiz. Now, team big cat, we're brilliant. Cats can be speedy, they can be stealthy, they've got great senses, they're amazing animals. We can often be a little bit solitary, we, we tend to like to work by ourselves, but for our quiz today, I need people to join Big Cat. Be one of my wild cats. Fantastic, okay, so that's one team choice. Let's go to Khalil next. I think I might be able to guess just from what you're wearing what your team might be about. Um, but tell everyone at home what your team is. Yep, that's right. Today I'm representing Team Dinosaurs. Uh, dinosaurs are obviously some of the oldest uh, animals that we commonly see at the Natural History Museum in our collections and stuff. But there are some stuff, uh, some, some organisms long before them. You might recognize uh, some British dinosaur names like Baryonyx, Megalosaurus, and one of my favorites is Iguanodon. And there are some slightly wonky statues of Iguanodon in one of my local parks here in London, Crystal Palace Park. Now I'm hoping that I can draw on the, the wisdom and experience of these ancient animals to give us the answers to this quiz and get a lead over the other teams. Okay, I do like the sound of that. Um, but last but, not last but not least, let's come to Christina and find out more about your team. Hi, Rosie. Hi, everyone. So I am Team Plans. And even though the other two teams look pretty awesome and plans get overlooked sometimes, plans are amazing. And that's why I picked them. They've been around for longer than dinosaurs. They can move like cats, but they can do all the pretty amazing stuff. And they're found all around the world. They can be amazing. They withstand hot temperatures like today, for example. They can live in the water. They can, they can live really, really high up in the trees, not even touching the ground. And, and they're also pretty amazing British plants too. So believe it or not, in the UK, there's so many uh, different plants that if you pay a little bit of attention, you'll get to see. Even sometimes 
carnivorous plants like the peach plant. So if you want to uh, join a very, very diverse, huge, all around the world, all team, join my team and get the points I get during the quiz. Okay, I like that. A little bit of fighting talk early on. That sounds fantastic. So whilst you're at home, choose which team you want to join and let us know in the comments who you'll be supporting today. I'll just tell you a little bit more about our family festival. There's definitely some competition with our team captains there. They want your support. So our, our family festival is an online family festival. We've got loads of activities for you to try. We've got lots of um, at home activities. We've got a plant bio blitz where you get to know the plants that are living near where you are. And we've also got an online gallery that you can add your pictures to a feel good gallery to show us how nature has been helping you through the lockdown. The Family Festival is all about tuning into nature, connecting with it and finding out how we can help it. And that links to today's quiz, too. So I think what we should do next is go through some of the quiz rules. So there's going to be three rounds and in each round, there's going to be four questions. So what we'll do is we'll ask you a question first, give you a short amount of time to think about the answer and then we'll tell you the answer straight away. So that means you don't really need to write anything down, but it might be a good idea to keep a, um, a record of your points as we go along. There will be one point per question. So that's a maximum of 12 points for you to score at home. But don't forget, you'll get to add whatever your team captain scores onto your own score. So let's say you went with Team Dinos and Khalil managed to get five points. That'll be an extra five points for you at the end. So uh, we really do want you to talk in your families and friends at home about what you think the answer is. But please don't be tempted to post them in the chat box. And if you do see anyone posting any answers, Definitely don't be tempted to copy them. You never know, they might not have the answer right. Stick to what you think the answer is and I wish you the best of luck. So I think we might be ready to get started. I hope our team captains are ready to go as well. We'll dive straight in to our first round, which is a general nature round and our first question. Our first question is going to need you to look very carefully. It's all about centipedes. Centipedes are fantastic at looking after plants because they eat lots of pests. And in a moment, we're going to show you a picture of a centipede from our collection. So what we want you to do is look really, really closely and count how many legs the centipede has. So there might be quite a lot of legs. So it could be a good idea to work in a team, divide it up, count the legs, as many legs as you can, because we're only going to give you 15 seconds to count all of the legs. Now, a top tip would be count very carefully. There might be a bit of a surprise. Okay, are you ready to get counting? Let's go. So about halfway through your time, Time's up, I'm afraid. Hopefully you managed to count all of the legs you could see. Hopefully you have your answers ready at home. Should we reveal the answer? The answer was 29 legs. Well done if you said 29 legs. Good counting. That is one point if you said 29 legs. Now that might surprise you. You might have been expecting an even number, but if you look at that centipede, just along the top, there is a leg missing. So that's why it's so important to count very carefully where you can. Okay, question two. Now this one is about a scientist that you may have been learning about in your schoolwork. She was one of the first female fossil scientists and we have lots of her specimens that she collected in the Natural History Museum. She was from Dorset in the UK, but what was her name? We're going to tell you her second name, but what? We're going to tell you her first name, but what was her second name? So her first name was Mary. Mary who? If you've ever been to the Natural History Museum, you might recognise the fossil we have up on screen there, a huge pliosaur that she collected in Lyme Regis. Um, but hopefully you've got your answers at home. 
we're going to go and check in with one of our team captains for this. So let's go to Alison, Team Big Cats. Are you there? Do you think you might know the answer? I think I do. I think I do know this one because I walk, when I'm in the museum, I walk past this amazing specimen every day. I think it's Mary Anning. Mary Anning, should we find out? Is that right? <laughs> well done. Absolutely right. One point if you said Mary Anning. Fantastic stuff. Thank you, Alison. We'll move on to question three. Question three is all about rocks. Now, don't worry if you don't very don't know very much about rocks just yet. We're going to tell you everything you need to know. And you're going to need to look closely again. So sedimentary rocks are a type of rocks that have layers. In a moment, we're going to show you a picture of six different types of rocks. And we want you to tell us how many of them are sedimentary rocks. Remember, they often have layers. That is the key. So we're only going to give you 15 seconds again. So you're going to need to look carefully, work in your team, and let us know the answer. Are you ready? Go. Time is up. Okay. Well, that was quite a tricky one. Hopefully you were looking carefully. Hopefully you could see and you have your answer at home. Should we see what the answer was? The answer was three. Three types of sedimentary rock there. Three nice sets of layers. And they are formed over millions of years of things like sand and mud settle down on top of each other and create layers over time. Now that last one in the corner might have, might have stumped you because that is sedimentary rock, but over millions of years, the earth has changed and the rocks have ended up on their side. So you can still see the layers, but they're just in a slightly different direction. So if you said three, well done, you've got that right. That is one point for you. And this is on to our final question of round one. It's my favorite question because it is about who. Here we have two pictures of animal poo. One is from a herbivore, which is a plant eater, and one is from a carnivore, which is a meat eater. What do you think? Which one is which? Now, we'll give you a few moments to think about the answer there. There might be some clues. If you look really carefully, you might see some clues inside some of these pictures of poo. One of them also might look quite familiar to you if you've been on countryside walks you might have seen one of these before. I think though we should go to one of our team captains to answer this. I think, let's go to Khalil, team dinosaur. Hopefully you might Where have- uh, Hello, Khalil. <laughs> what do you think the answer might be for this one? Well, I think the one on the right looks kind of familiar. It looks, it kind of looks a bit like a cow pack. Um, so even if it's not, the, the poo of a cow in that particular picture. Maybe it's something similar to that. And I'm pretty sure cows don't eat meat. So one on the left, uh, I mean, I used to have a dog and that ate meat and its poo looked quite a lot like the one on the left. So I'm gonna say that I think, in my dinosaur opinion, the one on the left is the meat eater and the one on the right is the plant eater. Should we find out if you're right? The answer is... Well done! <laughs> so the one on the left was carnivore, it's actually from a wolf, so you were very, very close there. Um, and the other one, a cow. And if anyone out there has been on countryside walks just like yourself, they may well have recognised that one. That brings us to the end of our first round, so let's bring back in our other two captains and we will um, find out your scores. Also, at home, we'd love to hear how you're getting on. So type in, let us know your scores so far. The maximum is four points so far. Um, so, Alison, how was that round for you? Not too bad, actually. I did, I have to admit, I did get one question not quite right. The, the first one, the centerpiece, I, I only got to 28 legs, I'm afraid. But don't worry, team, big cat, we can claw this back. I actually got three out of four. Fantastic. Nice. I think a lot of people might have got a bit confused with those legs there. That's why you got to look carefully. Well done, Team Big Cat, so far. Uh, let's go to Christina next. How are you doing so far? 
Well, I'm really happy because I carefully counted all the legs of the centipede and got that right. But I did get one question wrong. I didn't guess the three sedimentary rocks for me because the last one was a little bit tricky. It was vertical. I wasn't sure about it, so I went for two. So after all, at the end of this round, I've got three out of four, which is not bad either. Not bad at all. That's really good. I can see some points coming in from home. We've got Jean Pierre, we've got Blanca and Steph. They're all around three or four points as well. So well done at home. Um, let's see how Khalil is doing. Well, here at Team Dinosaurs, I think we went in with the same overconfidence that Team Big Cats went in with. And I got a little bit, a little bit cocksure. And, and I, I got the first question wrong as well. I counted too many legs. Um, but I really like the Mary Annan question and the sedimentary rock question because as a dinosaur, a lot of our fossils are found in sedimentary rocks and Mary Annan obviously close to my heart as a dinosaur. So yeah, I enjoyed that round, but I think I'm gonna have to be a bit more careful with my counting in future. Three out of four. Sorry, what, how many points? Three. Three, so it's a bit of a tie in our studio at the moment. Lots of people agreeing with you that the centipede was a tricky question. It was missing <laughs> a leg. Now, I just remind everyone at home, please don't be tempted to post your um, answers into the chat box. Just chat about it with your family or friends at home. Um, but I think everyone's doing very well so far. We should move on to our second round. Now, I really like this round. This is a round that's going to need you to use your senses. Um, so round two is all about senses. And question one, is going to need you to use your sense of hearing. You're going to need to listen very carefully. In a moment, we're going to play you three different noises of birds that you might hear in the UK. You're going to hear a great spotted woodpecker, a blackbird, and a tawny owl. Now, don't worry if you've never heard them before. You don't need to have heard them. You just need to listen really, really carefully to the ones that we play you today. After you hear those three sounds, we're going to play you a fourth mystery sound. And we need you to match that to one of the ones that you have just heard. OK, so it might be a good idea to turn your volume up a little bit if you can't quite hear at the moment. I'm going to play three different noises um, to start off with. So let's let's start with the great spotted woodpecker. <laughs> Next up, we have the blackbird. And third, we have the tawny owl. Okay, so now I'm going to play you the fourth mystery sound and you need to match that to one of the ones you've just heard. Okay. I love that. I love listening to the different bird songs. Really nice. Just take some time out of your day. Tune in to the nature around you. It's really relaxing. Um, but hopefully you've managed to match that sound to one of the ones you've already heard. And we can reveal the answer was number two, the blackbird. So well done if you got that right. Good listening. That is one point for you. Now, question two. Lots of predators in nature have a very good sense of sight. They have to have super keen vision because some of their prey have very clever ways to hide. So for this question, we want you to look closely and work out what type of animal is very well hidden here. So don't worry, you don't need to know the exact species or the exact kind of type of creature. Have a close look. See if you can work out what type of animal is hidden here. 
It's very well camouflaged, as you might be able to, or maybe not be able to see. Um, and I think it is very, very cool. And to help us to answer this question, let's go to one of our team captains. I think we should go to Team Plants, Christina, for this one. I hope everyone at home has got their answers ready. So, Christina, have you got any thoughts about what the answer might be here? Well, the thing is, Rosie, I, I think I can recognise the members of my team fairly easily, the plants. And there's something there that is not, it does look a lot like a plant, but it's not a plant. It's really well camouflaged. And I think I can see some legs there and maybe it's the wings that is making it look so much like, like a, um, a dead leaf. So shall I, shall I say what I think? Yeah, please do. I think it might be a butterfly. Should we see if you are right? The answer was, well done. Yes, Christina, it was a butterfly. So if you said butterfly at home, that is one point for you. I think as well, if you said not, we'll give you a point there because they're very hard to tell apart sometimes. So you get a point for butterfly or for moth. If you're still wondering where the hidden creature is, you might just be able to notice there is a leaf there. Well, it looks like a leaf, that brown thing. That is actually the butterfly. And when the wings are closed, it does look just like a dead leaf. But when it opens up the wings, you've got these beautiful colors that you can see in the second picture there. Um, a very, very cool type of camouflage. So moving on to question three. This one is going to need your sense of imagination. And this one is a video question. Hello everyone, I'm Mike from the learning team. I'm going to describe to you one of my most favourite specimens in the hall of the museum. You're going to have to close your eyes, listen very carefully and use your imagination to think about what I'm describing and work out what animal it is. Are you ready? Okay, close your eyes. So this animal has a large body with four legs. Its head is much smaller than the rest of its body. And it's a herbivore, which means it eats plants. But it doesn't have any skin anymore, just a skeleton, because it died a really long time ago. And in fact, you wouldn't find any type of this animal alive today. It's got a long tail with four very sharp spikes on the end. And all over its back are large pointy parts called plates. And you might think that these plates are just for protection the scientists think they actually help the animal to cool down. Open your eyes. Can you work out what animal it is? Okay, so a great description there. We had four legs, a large body. Sounds like we can just see the bones, so probably quite a prehistoric animal. Also what I heard was the plates all along the back and the spikes on the end of the tail. So what could that be? Hopefully you have your answers ready at home and we will reveal that the answer for question three was a stegosaurus. So well done if you said stegosaurus, one point if you got that. And specifically, it was our amazing stegosaurus specimen at the Natural History Museum. She's called Sophie the Steg. You might have seen her before if you visited the museum or maybe you can see it next time. Very exciting that the museum is actually reopening again soon. And if you want to visit, just head onto our website. You'll find all the information you need to know there to give you a very enjoyable, safe visit. But now it's time for question four, the last question in our senses round. This is a bit of an odd question, so bear with me. It's a sense of touch question. We're going to be bringing back our team captains for this. So we'll say hello again to Alison, Khalil and Christina. Now, I said that this is a sense of touch question. We're going to need you to investigate a specimen that I know you all have at home, which is yourselves. I'm going to need everyone, first of all, to touch their nose. Touch your nose at the kind of the base of your nose where it meets your face. Um, or maybe you can ask an adult if you can touch their nose instead. And have a little feel of that. It probably feels quite quite strong, quite tough. It probably doesn't move around too much. Now, I want you to touch the end of your nose and give that a little bit of a wiggle. Now, the top of your nose was actually made of bone. That's why that feels so tough. 
the end of your nose you'll notice is a lot more flexible. You can wiggle that around and that is because that's made of something called cartilage. So your question today is to use your sense of touch to feel around the rest of your head and find something else that is made of cartilage. So remember, it's going to be something that's quite flexible, but also quite tough. So we'll, we'll hand over to our team captains there. I like Alison's giving her, her costume a little bit of a feel there too. I should mention it's going to be on your human face. So I like that Khalil took his dinosaur head off as well. That's good to see. Um, have a little feel around. Hopefully, hopefully you'll find something that feels flexible, just like the end of your nose, um, but it's something a little bit different. <laughs> I like Christina down there at the bottom giving, giving her face a real good investigate there. In fact, I think we'll go to Alison for the answer for this one. So hopefully everyone at home has got their answer ready. Alison, can you tell us what do you think, what else on your head is made of cartilage? Okay, so having a bit of a feel around and, and feeling what feels similar to my nose, I think it's our ears. Do you think it's our ears? Should we find out? Yeah. Well done. Absolutely. The outside part of your ears are made of cartilage. They're nice and flexible. Very well done. If you said that, that is one point for you at home. That brings us to the end of our second round. So let's get Alison, Khalil and Christina all back in the studio. If you're at home playing along, let us know your score so far. Um, but we'll check in with our team captain. So we'll go to Khalil, first of all. Um, how are you doing so far? What have you scored? Well, I did a little bit better that round, actually. Uh, team Dinos, we've got another four points, bringing our total to seven. It was really great to hear from my good friend, Sophie, the Stegosaurus. Uh, you know, she's just a big part of Team Dinosaur, so it's great to see her represented in the quiz. Love it. Excellent. Well done. Um, we'll go to Team Plants next. Christina, how are you doing so far? I think I'm doing quite well. Um, I have to admit that um, I got the Stegosaurus question wrong. I thought you were trying to trick us. I went for a different dinosaur with the spikes. Um, but apart from that, I got the rest right. So I got three out of four again. So I'm at six, a total of six points at the moment. Okay, fantastic. Well done, Team Plants. And Alison, Team Big Cats, how are you getting on? Again, pretty good. I did get... Uh, one question wrong so i love the the butterfly round my my keen eyesight i spotted that straight away but despite being a cat i'm not very good at identifying birds by sound sight yes sound not so much so in total i did get three out of four on that round so so far i've got six Okay, well done. Well, we've got great scores coming in from Joanna and Regina on Facebook as well. Well done to everyone at home playing along. Well done to our team captains. This does lead us on to our third and final round. <laughs> round three is all about pollinators. So we thought we'd start right at the very beginning with question one. What actually is a pollinator? So this might be quite a tricky question. And we've given you three answers to choose from. What is a pollinator? Is it A, something that eats leaves? B, something that makes pollen? Or C, something that moves pollen from one plant to another? So quite a tricky question here. You've got something that eats leaves, something that makes pollen, or something that moves pollen from one plant to another. It's quite a tricky one to start off round three. Hopefully you have your answers at home and we can reveal that the answer to question one was in fact C. Well done if you got that one point. So a pollinator is something that moves pollen from one plant to another. And that could be something like a bee or a butterfly. Some birds do it, some bats do it. And you can see in this picture that we've got there, this bee was visiting the plant to drink some tasty nectar. Whilst it was there, it got covered in that yellow pollen that you can see sticking to its head. Now, when that bee goes to another plant, it will move that pollen to the other plant. And that is how some plants reproduce. It helps them to grow. So we know that pollinators are really important to help new plants to grow, really important for a healthy planet and also for healthy humans as well. So well done if you said C. 
That is one point. Question two. This is a very special plant called Rafflesia. Now it's found in Southeast Asia and this, this plant has flies as the pollinators. The flies visit this plant to collect the pollen. And to help the flies do that, it gives off a disgusting smell. But what do you think it smells like? Does it smell of A, moldy cheese, B, rotting meat, or C, lemons? So what does this smell like? Remember, it's a smell that might attract flies. And a nice bit of extra information, this is one of the largest flowers in the world. It can grow up to four feet wide. So that's probably taller than some of our younger viewers watching at home. Um, I think to answer this one, we should go to team plants. It's a plant question. Let's go to team plants. We'll get Christina back in there. Hello again, Christina. We're calling on you again. I think you might know the answer to this question. I think I might know it, but I'm really, really tense because if I get this wrong, I will disappoint the whole of my team. So I'll go for one, but I don't know. So, so which one are you going to go for? I'm going to say lemons. I don't think flies would like lemon that much. Moldy cheese. I think plants don't know cheese, so I don't know why they would smell like cheese. So I'm going to go for rotting meat and assume the flies like that. So your answer is rotting meat? Yes. Should we find out if that was right? The answer was... Well done, Team Plants. <laughs> I'm cheering for you at home. Well done, Christina. Well done at home. If you said that, that is one point for rotting meat. Okay, moving on to question three. There's only two questions left. We're almost through. You might recognize these as blackberries, a blackberry plant, or maybe even bramble. Maybe you've been picking blackberries lately. Now this question is about blackberry plant or bramble. We're going to show you four pictures in just a second as the blackberry plant changes from a flower to a berry. What we want you to do is to put these images in order to show us the changes from a flower to a berry. So let's get the images up there on screen. So we've got four different ones for you to look at. They're in the wrong order at the moment. Put them in the right order to help us see how the flower changes into a berry. Now, things to look out for, have a look at the leaves and the petals, they might give you some clues, and also look at the colours of the fruits. And maybe next time you're out, if you've got any blackberry plants near you, have a look as well, see if you can spot these different stages of flowers on the one near your house. But I think that's just enough time for you to have put them in the right order. Let's reveal the answer was in fact, C, A, B, D. So we started off with the beautiful white flower there. Slowly the petals will start to fade and fall away. We can see a green berry starting to grow as the middle of the flower changes. And then we end up as the berry ripens with a blackberry that's starting to look a little bit more like the ones that we like to pick and eat. So well done if you got that in the right order. That is one point for you. And it leads us onto our final question of the quiz. So we know that pollinators are really important. They help plants to grow, which means humans like us have lots of tasty food to eat. But it's important that we help pollinators at the moment because they are struggling a little bit. Three of these answers are simple ways to help pollinators at home, but one of them is not a very good way. So the question is, which of these is not a good way to help pollinators? Planting lots of different types of plants, making bug hotels, mowing the lawn every day, or letting other people know how important pollinators are. So which one of these is not a good way to help pollinators? So have a little think, and I think we'll, we'll go back to one of our team captains for our final question here. Let's go to Khalil, team dinosaurs. Now we know you know your dino stuff, but do you know your pollinator trivia as well? What do you think the answer might be here? Well, I'm thinking, um, by process of elimination, uh, I'm thinking, A, if we plant lots of different types of plants, that's like having lots of different options at a buffet. 
Now that's that's only going to help the pollinators. E making bug hotels again. Uh, if a lot of pollinators are insects, then maybe you know that's uh, maybe maybe that'll give them places to stay, or maybe it'll just make them stay in the hotel and not go out and do their pollinating. Uh, mowing the lawn every day. I mean, how much pollinating gets done on a lawn? It's just a bit of flat grass. So I don't know if that would make much of a difference. Um, and letting other people know how important pollinators are. Well, the more we can spread the word about any environmental issues, the better. So it's either going to be B or C. And I'm going to go for B, making bug hooks. Because make mowing the lawn every day is going to make a huge amount of difference. But making bug hotels might just make them stay in, stay in there. Okay, so you're going to go for B. We can reveal that the answer for our final question was, in fact... <laughs> no! <laughs> Sorry, Team Dinos. <laughs> Team Dinos will forgive you for this one because you might think mowing the lawn every day is a really good thing to do. It keeps your lawn looking healthy. But actually... Mowing the lawn too much takes away some of those lovely wildflowers that pollinators like to visit. So you've got three lovely, really simple ways to help pollinators at home. Planting lots of different types of plants, making bug hotels is a good place for them to live, um, and also letting other people know just how important pollinators are. Really simple things we can do to help them. But this brings us to the end of the quiz. So we'll say hello again to all of our fantastic team captains. As we get them back into the studio at home, let us know how you are getting on. Send us in your points so far. And in a moment, you'll be able to add on your team captain's points too. So you can let us know your final score. So I think we're gonna go to Alison again, first of all, to, to find how that round was for you and to reveal your final score. I am very excited to say I did very well in that final round, 100%, four out of four. So total, I have 10 points, which I'm pretty proud of. Fantastic. Well done to Team Cats. Well done to Alison. 10 points for you to add on to your score at home if you were part of Team Big Cats. Well done. That is fantastic. Next up, we're going to go to Khalil, Team Dinosaurs. How was that round for you and how is your final score looking? It went okay. I mean, it was a bit embarrassing to get the bug question wrong in front of the entire internet. Um, overall, I did okay. I got three out of four that round. So actually, that puts me on a level pegging, I think, with Team Big Cats. I've got a total of 10 points out of 12. Okay, well done. I know Team Dinosaurs will be very happy to have those 10 points to add on to their score. Well done, Team Dinos. And Christina, let's go to Team Plants. I'm hoping you did well in that round. How did you get on? Well, I was really, really lucky with that round because I know my plants quite well and they treat me quite well in that round. So I got four out of four as well, 100% uh, like Alison did, which I'm really chuffed about. And that puts me on 10 out of 12 as well, which makes everything really interesting, I think. Wow, I we have a tie in the studio. That is fantastic. Well done to our free team captains. Very well done. I'm sure your teams at home are going to be very, very happy with you. So if you're a team plants, you get an extra 10 points. Everyone gets an extra 10 points by the sounds of it. Tiebreaker, I can't believe it. Um, and it looks, we got some scores coming in from home. Claire was on Team Dinos. She's, she was rooting for you, Khalil. We've got Sally on Facebook, who got a total of 21 points overall. And Steph on YouTube only got the centipede question wrong. So well done. We've got some really great um, players at home. But I think before we say farewell to our lovely team captains, it would only be right to give you guys the chance to say a farewell message to all of your supporters. So we'll, we'll start with Alison there. Any words to say goodbye to team cats? Oh, just a massive congratulations to all my cats and kittens out there. Thank you so much for supporting our team. You are absolutely perfect. Oh, that's lovely. And Khalil, any words for Team Dinos? Thank you so much, guys, for joining us on Team Dino. I know that we could have maybe stomped and chomped all the competition. <laughs> we think we did a pretty good performance in the end. And remember, this quiz may be extinct, but dinosaurs are always going to be around as long as you're representing Team Dinosaur. And as long as every time you look and see a bird out there, you remember that birds are actually descended from dinosaurs. So, in a way, dinosaurs are still around anyway. 
that is a nice farewell message. And Christina, any words for tea plants? Well, well done to all my pudding scientists. And thank you so much for rooting for team plants. And I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. And then next time that you go outside and go for a walk or look out of the window, you look at your plants and notice that they are out there and they are helping us thrive and uh, live. So that's all from me. Bye, guys. Thank you to our free, te free team captain. So we'll say a big thank you and a goodbye to you. <laughs> That was brilliant and a big well done and thank you to everyone at home for joining us. Remember, there's still time to check out our family festival. Just head to our website. There's loads of activities for you to take part in. This family festival is all about tuning into nature and enjoying the natural world around you. So it's going to be lovely weather today and over the weekend. Why not take time out of your busy day to just stop, look closely, Listen carefully to the nature around you and find out what you love about it. Next week, we're back with our regular Nature Live schedule with a talk about plastic pollution on Tuesday. And on Friday, it will be all about snakes. So we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye. <laughs>